worship you, King of Kings, we glorify your name. You reign, O God, God, O God. You shine, Jesus, shine. Father, you reign. Shine, Jesus, shine. Lord, forever you reign. Shine, Jesus, shine.
morning and praise the Lord. Welcome to Sound Me Pepper Church. Today is Sunday, the 1st November 2020. We are indeed so excited that you have joined us and I believe the Lord has continued to bless you. Uh, in this service today, I know the Lord is going to speak to you. You are going to be encouraged and uh, we thank God for his goodness and his love. Praise and worship him. We are indeed so grateful. You guys, you are just amazing. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for touching and lifting us into the very presence of God. Friends, today, I want to declare this month, the month of November 2020, this new month, as it begins today, I declare this is the month of restoration. The month of restoration. And the Bible says in the book of uh, Joel chapter 2, verse 25, so I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust, my great army which I send among you today. Yes, the Lord has promised he will restore. This year has been a tough year. We've gone through very hard moments. But I want to declare this month of November, may the Lord restore to you everything that the locusts have eaten, everything that the crawling locusts have eaten, everything that the consuming locusts have eaten, everything that the chewing locusts have eaten. May the Lord bring an abundance over your life. And I prophesy it is your month of restoration. And just declare to me, I am being restored in Jesus' name. Can we open this service with a word of prayer? Our Father and our God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for our listeners. We thank you, Lord God, for the church and those joining us on different platforms as they listen to your word, oh God. I pray that this month of November, Lord, may it be a month that we shall be restored. Yes, Lord God, we have been hit very hard, but Father, our eyes are on you, and we declare restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, as we continue with our service, we pray that you are going to speak to us, encourage us, and refresh us in your very presence. In Jesus' name, I pray and I believe. And somebody join together with me and just shout, Amen and Amen. Thank you so much. Last Sunday, brethren, we began a subject that I called the church at Bethany. The church at Bethany. And we read from the book of John, chapter number 12, from verse number 1 to verse number 11. The book of John, chapter number 1, from verse number 1 to verse number 11. And we said, prior to the triumphant entry of Jesus in Jerusalem, he had supper in the house of Simon the leper. And we talked about the people who were invited uh, six members that were invited, which is a reflection of the church all over the world. And on Sunday, we talked about, um, we talked about Lazarus. He was present in that dinner. And Lazarus was present because he had a testimony. He was dead and he was alive. Jesus rose him from the dead. And we said, we as believers need to have a testimony. Number two, we talked about Martha in verse number two. Martha, and we said Martha served, and we talked of the importance of us as believers serving, serving. Number three, remember number three, number one, Lazarus, testimony, number two, Martha, servant, and number three, Mary, a worshiper, Mary, a worshiper, and we talked about the oil that she had, uh, very expensive, that costed a year's salary, she broke the bottle, and poured the oil on the feet of Jesus. And we talked of the importance of us lifting our hands and just worshiping the King of Kings and bringing a new aroma, a fresh aroma into the house. Hallelujah. And I want to call upon us that we may worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Today, brethren, I want to look at the other three. Remember, there were three on this side and three on the other side. And in the middle of that table, in the middle, in that dinner, Jesus was present. Jesus was present. So today, I want to continue and talk about the three remaining characters. And these three remaining characters, I will talk about number four, Judas Iscariot. 
Number five, I'll talk about the Jews. And number six, I'll talk about the chief priests. Turn with me in the book of John, chapter number 12, verse number four and verse number five, as I speak about the fourth character, Judas Iscariot. The Bible reads in verse number four and verse number five, but one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who would later betray him, objected and said, why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. I repeat, look at verse number four again. Now, this is after Mary. Mary had taken the oil, broke the bottle, and poured it on the feet of Jesus and worshipped Jesus. We spoke about that last Sunday, which I will not repeat. But now, in verse number four, look at what is happening. After Mary has done that, worship the Lord out of her heart with everything, every resource that she had. Verse number four. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, saying, Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? Friends, when I look at Judas Iscariot, member number four, what do I see? I see a betrayer. I see a betrayer. I see somebody who is a criticizer. I see a greedy person. I see a selfish person. I see a covetous person. <coughs> Excuse me. Simon, uh, Simon Iscariot, uh, Judas Iscariot, not Simon, Judas Iscariot. He was uh, a betrayer. So point number four is a betrayer a criticizer, a greedy and selfish person. Aristotle said this. Aristotle said this. Criticism is something we can, we can avoid easily by saying nothing, doing nothing, and being nothing. I repeat, Aristotle said this. Criticism is something we can avoid easily by saying nothing, doing nothing, and being nothing. After Mary had worshipped, after Mary had taken the expensive oil and poured it on the feet of Jesus, what do I see? I see Judas Iscariot. He's standing up in verse number four. And what does he do? He begins to complain. He begins to complain. And the scripture says very clearly, he would betray him. So this Judas, he was going to betray Jesus. So he was not happy with the action that Mary did. He was not happy. And what are some of the lessons that we learn as we look at verse number four to verse number six of John? Number one, we see he was doing the work of Satan by complaining and murmuring and criticizing others. He criticized what Mary did. Friends, when you begin to do the work of God, when you give yourself to the work of Jesus, when you give yourself to the cause of this cross, I want you to know people will criticize you. People will talk about you. When you show up early in church, they will talk. When you show up, when you, when you are in the choir, they will talk. When you begin to clean the church, they will talk. When you begin to do something in the congregation, they will talk. Oh yes, Mary poured out the oil, which was very expensive. Judas Iscariot started talking. Don't fear criticism. It will always be there. It will always be there. He thought this was too much devotion to Jesus. Friends, it does not mean that Jesus wants little quality things. No. We have to give Jesus the best from where we are. We have to give Jesus the best from where we are. He was greedy. He was selfish. He was covetous. He wanted money for himself, not even because of the poor. And as you really realize that, this he said, not because he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. Simon, do not discard it, was a thief. He was a thief. He used to take what was put in the money box. And so he was greedy. He was selfish. He was covetous. Judas, Judas Iscariot. He was not speaking the truth. He was not speaking the truth. He had no true love for his master. He was a hypocrite. And later, he kissed Jesus on a cheek and then betrayed him. 
The church. In the church today, friends, we have betrayers. People who will betray you. Eh? We have people who will hurt you the most and stamp you at the back. Not the sinners, but the born again ones. The people who say hallelujah and they speak in deep tongues. They are the ones who will turn and stab you at the back. Judas is carrying out. People who are close to you. A brother or a sister next to you. They will hurt you until you feel like backsliding. You feel like giving up on salvation. You feel like mm, it is not worth following Jesus. Do not hate them. For they are there not to finish you, but to push you into the next level. Hey, listen to this. Anybody who is backbiting you, listen, they are backbiting. In other words, as they back and bite you, they push you into the next level. May every backbiter in your life push you into your next level in Jesus' name. Betrayers, when you share with them your secret, they will, they will not stand with you in prayer. Instead, they will be praying that you fail. They will be praying that you will not succeed. My friends, I want you to know, Judas, they will always be there, Judas. Remember, he was a disciple of Jesus. Remember, he was there with Jesus. He was walking with Jesus. And he was seated at the table. He is there, and he knows. And Jesus knows very clearly, this guy is with me, but he's going to betray me. Friends, you will be betrayed. You will be betrayed. When, 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 when you know that people are going to hurt you, when you know people are going to speak about you, friends, don't fix your eyes on them. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Listen to this. When you dress nicely, they will talk. When you don't dress nicely, they will talk. When you sing in the worship team, they will talk. When you don't sing in the worship team, they will talk. When you do something in church, they will talk. When you don't do anything, when you don't take any leadership position, they will talk. Leave them because you are not doing it for them but for God. Judas told, Jesus told Judas, leave her alone. Leave her alone. For she's doing this for the day of my burial. She's doing this for the day of my burial. Judas thought that the more money would bring him more happiness. And that is why he betrayed Jesus. Look at John verse number 6. Verse number 6. Look at what goes here on. Verse number 6. Uh, of, of John 12, verse number 6. Then he said, not that he cared for the poor. This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and he had the money box and he used to take what was, what was being put in it. This guy, John, was a thief. And I, I, I think one of the questions I would ask Jesus when we go to heaven is that, Jesus, how did you make Judas Iscariot your treasurer? And yet you knew he was a thief. As a pastor, I cannot make a person a thief to be a treasurer. And Jesus knew that Judas was a betrayer. He used to steal, and yet he still made him one of his disciples. He still made him one of his disciples. So we have number one on this other side, we have Lazarus. He has a testimony. We have Martha, a worshiper. We have Mary. Uh, we have Martha, a servant. We have Mary, a worshiper. And then on this other side, we have Judas Iscariot, a betrayer. Remember number five in verse number, verse number, uh, verse number nine and ten. Verse number nine and ten. Remember number five. The Bible says, now. A great many of the Jews knew that he was there. And they came, not for the sake of Jesus only, but that they might also see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. Verse number, verse number 10. But the chief priest plotted to put Lazarus to death also. Now, look at verse number 9. Verse number 9. Now, a great many of the Jews knew that he was there. And they came, not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might also see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. Remember number five, I see there is the Jews. They are seated, they are there. And why are they there? Aha, uh -huh. spectators. Spectators. These are spectators. They came to spectate. Look at verse 9 again.
Now a great many of the Jews knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but they, that they might also see Lazarus, whom he had raised. Let me give you a quote from Oscar Brim, uh, Brimpong. Oscar Brimpong. He said this, Some people have been spectators all their lives. They have never taken a step to be on the field of play. However, they are good judges of those that take bold steps to make a difference in, 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 in their lives. Friends, spectators are the worst. They will always tell you how to do things. They will always tell you how to kick the ball. When you go in the stadium, I want to take a scenario of Kenya. And I know some of you who are watching me or in different countries, you have good teams. Huh? The, 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 the EPL, the Spanish, uh, the La Liga, and, uh, and, and football in Germany, and in Brazil. I know uh, in Brazil, let me give us uh, Brazil, Sao Paulo, and Corinthians. But in Kenya, where I am, eh? AFC Leopard and, 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 and Gormaya. The worst people are not the players. Players are friends. They live together. They eat together. They do stuff together. But the worst people are spectators. Even in the church of Christ, the worst people are spectators. They don't get involved in anything. They are there just to spectate and see. Friends, God is calling. God is calling. Don't be a spectator in the house of the Lord. Don't be a spectator in the church. Get involved. Begin to do something. I call upon you, wherever you are, wherever you worship, whichever denomination you go to, God has not called you to be a spectator. God has called you that you may be involved. The Jews, they came to spectate. Is it true that Lazarus is alive? Is it true that Jesus raised him from the dead? Is it true that this man can eat? Is it true this man can walk? Friends, Jesus is in the business of performing miracles. Jesus is in the business of doing powerful things in the world. We don't need to get uh, to be in, uh, spectators. We want to be involved. And of course, I would want you to know, Bethany was so near Jerusalem, and so many Jews came in from all the direction to see Lazarus, who had been raised from the dead, and also to see Jesus, who had raised him. They came to spectate. They came to see. They came to watch. Hallelujah. As I said last Sunday, there is something for everyone in the house of the Lord. Every one of you, God has blessed you in different giftings. And there is something you can do in the house of the Lord. Don't you believe when somebody tells you there is nothing you can do? No, 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 no. Every one of us, there is something we can do in the house of the Lord. Get to discover your gifting. Get to discover your passion. Get to discover that which God wired you and bring it in the house of the Lord. And glorify God in the gift that God has given you. Don't listen to anything negative. In that table where Jesus was, they're having dinner. The Jews were there. The spectators were there. I am calling upon you, my friend. Don't be a spectator. Don't be a spectator. In the house of the Lord, there are many things to be done. And if you find yourself you're not comfortable in this particular area, there is an area that you'll be able to find in the house of the Lord, which you'll feel, yes, this is what I was wired to do. This is what I was called to do. And I call upon us today, those of us watching us, kindly, let us identify the giftings that God has given us and begin to go. The Jews, they came to spectate, they came to see. Get involved in your local congregation. Get involved in wherever you go for service. Get involved even in a family. Not all children are the same. Every Family has got different giftings. And I want to call upon us, let us begin to discover that which God has given us and begin to use it to the glory and honor of his name. The Bible says in verse number 9 again, now a great many of the Jews knew that he was there and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might also see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. They came to spectate. They came to spectate. They came to see, is it true? Is it true that he is alive?
my brothers and my sisters, as I share this, I am humbly calling upon us, let us discover that which God has given you and begin to serve God from the area that God has called you. So member number one, we have Lazarus. What does Lazarus have? A testimony. Member number two, we have Martha. What does Martha have? Martha, a servant. Member number three, we have what? We have Mary. What do we have in Mary? A worshiper. On this other side, member number four, we have who? Judas Iscariot. What does he have? A betrayer. Member number five, whom do we have? The Jews. And what are they? Spectators. Member number six in verse number ten. Verse number 10. Verse number 10, the Bible says, But the chief priests plotted to put Lazarus to death also. That is striking. But the chief priests plotted to put Lazarus to death also. Why? In verse number 11. Why? Why do they want Lazarus dead? Why do they want to kill Lazarus? Verse number 11. Because on account of him, many of the Jews went away and believed in Jesus. <laughs> on account of the resurrection of, 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 of Lazarus, having been resurrected with Jesus, on that account, the chief priests came and they wanted to kill Lazarus. They wanted to eliminate him. So, who are the chief priests? These are the people I call dream killers. Dream killers. I repeat, dream killers. A quote from Israel Moore. Israel Moore said this. A good friend will help you discover the potentials you haven't uncovered. A bad friend will help you to cover up the potentials you have already recovered and, and make your choice and make your choice. I repeat, Israel Moore said this, a good friend will help you to discover the potentials you haven't uncovered. A bad friend will help you to cover up the potentials you have already recovered. Make your choice. Listen, they wanted to cover up the evidence. The chief priest wanted to kill Lazarus on account that he had made many people to come to Christ. Lazarus was alive. And the evidence of his resurrection was so clear that they could not resist it. The gospel was being propagated. Just the testimony that Lazarus had was touching many people, transforming many people. As long as he lived, they knew. As long as he lived, they knew. Many people were going to be changed. Many people are going to be transformed. Friends, I want to submit to you, there are people who will kill your dream. There are people who will kill your vision. There are people who will not want you to amount into anything. There are people who will feel bad when the Lord blesses you. They will feel bad when the Lord promotes you. They will feel bad when God begins to do things because they are used to you being down. They are used to you being poor. They are used to you being not doing anything. And when the Lord begins to do things, they want to destroy you. They want to kill you. The chief priests, look, these are men of God. These are servants of God. These are men of the caller. These are people who are supposed to be encouraging and saying, yes, our work has been made easier through the testimony of Lazarus. Now the gospel is spreading. They are not happy because they held close their religion, Judaism. And they felt now they are losing more to this new guy, Jesus Christ. Friends, may the Lord help us that we will not be dream killers. That thing that God has dropped in your heart, that dream that God has put in your spirit, I want you to know, it may be big, it may seem like you have nothing that you can put together and achieve it, but in due course, you will be able to do it. The Jews came. The Jews came. They wanted to kill him. They wanted to kill Lazarus. Betrayers, they wanted, to, they wanted to kill the dream. They wanted to make sure he does not rise up. He does not amount into anything. And remember, all these guys are seated on the same table. Hallelujah. Right, yes. I want you to know, Judas Iscariot was there, a betrayer. 
Oh yes, the Jews were there, spectators. And now, number six, the, the, the dream killers, the chief priests, they were there sitting. And they're going to have dinner. Dinner is going to be served. Remember, this is the time that Jesus is having the last time. Actually, after this, Jesus is going to have a triumphant entry into Jerusalem. And as I said, it is only two miles away. So they are all seated. How is Jesus bringing together Lazarus, who has a testimony with Judah, uh, with Judas Iscariot and betrayer? How is Jesus bringing together Martha, who is a servant, and the Jews, who are spectators? How is Jesus bringing together a Mary, a worshiper, and the chief priest, who are dream killers? In the same table, having the same meal. Friends, what excites me the most is this. In that table, even though we had all these characters in that table, but in the middle of the table, Jesus, the Son of God, was there. And that makes the difference. That makes the difference. Jesus was there in the middle. No matter what you go through, no matter what kind of character you are, I want you to know Jesus is right there. And when Jesus is there, I want to assure you, things will be smooth. Things will be okay. Friends, may the Lord help us to be able to rediscover ourselves and take the word of God into our hearts and into our spirits and begin to walk the path as we glorify the name of Christ. As I bring my sermon to an end, I just want to mention these six characters very quickly one more time and then I would want you to go think about them, imagine about them and read the book of John chapter 12 one more time and the Lord will bless you. So remember number one on this other side, we had Lazarus. What does Lazarus have? A testimony. Remember number two, on this other side, we had Martha. What does Martha have? Martha, what does, she, what does she have? A servant. Remember number three, on this other side, we have who? Mary. What does she have? Come on, can I hear you? What does she have? A worshiper. On this other end, remember number four, we have who? Judas Iscariot. What does he have? Can I hear it one more time? He is a betrayer. Member number five, we have who? Come on, say it one more time. The Jews, yes. What do the Jews have? Can I hear you? Ah, yes, thank you. The Jews, they are there. Come on, can I hear you again? Spectators. And then lastly, we have member number six. Who are they? The chief priest. And, who, and what does the chief priest carry? Can I hear you? He is what? Do, 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 can I hear you? Do, do, do? Dream killers. And in the middle of this supper, in the house of Simon the leper, whom do we have? Jesus. And that makes the difference. Friends, may you discover what character you are as we serve the Lord together. May the grace of God be over our lives even as we continue to serve. I believe this sermon has indeed blessed you. And as we come to the close of that, immediately after that now, there is the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. That will be a topic of another day. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, and let's pray together. Our Father and our God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for our listeners. We thank you, Lord God, for our viewers. We thank you, Lord God, for the church congregation. We have shared about the church at Bethany. And Lord God, last Sunday we talked about uh, Lazarus. We talked about Martha. We talked about uh, Mary. And today, Lord... We have talked about Judas Iscariot. May you help us, O oh God, that we will not be betrayers. But Father, Lord God, we will be true brothers and true sisters standing with one another. We have talked about the Jews. Father, may you help us not to be spectators, but to get involved in the callings that you have called every one of us. And Lord God Almighty, I pray that we have talked about uh, the chief priest. Lord, I pray that we will not be there as a stumbling block to destroy and kill the dreams and the vision that your children have. And Lord, we thank you that in this table, Jesus Christ, you are there. Lord, may you intervene in all our situations and circumstances. We thank you. We bless you. And Father, Lord God, even as I prayed that the month of November will be a month of restoration. Lord, I declare that everyone watching us and listening us to the members of South B, may you restore everything that this pandemic has taken away from us. May you begin to lift your people, as we said in October. And this month, Lord, let there be restoration. 
We thank you. We bless you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, I pray and I believe. And somebody join me and shout, Amen and Amen. Thank you. God bless you. We love you. And we promise you that we are here to serve you. Keep watching us. Go into our YouTube. Subscribe. Like and share. Go into Arauna TV. Sub, uh, uh, share and like and make a comment and also into our South Bay Pepper Church uh, Facebook and please go there and the Lord will bless you. Friends, even as I wind up, I want to remind you, we have been told that uh, uh, the, the graph has started to go. The virus is again striking so hard. I want to urge all of us, let us wash our hands. Let us wear a mask. Let us keep the social distance. Let us sanitize our hands. Don't do this because of the politicians. Do it because of yourself. Do it because you want to protect people close to you. But I want you to know, Corona is not going to finish us. The Lord has taken care of Corona. We are going to make it in Jesus' name. Take responsibility and do the right thing. Church, we will continue to make sure that as you come in, we have uh, washed our hands, we are wearing the mask, we are keeping social distance, and after every service, our building will be fumigated. May the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you, and we want to appreciate those of you who have been giving, those of you who have been paying your tithe, those of you who have been calling and saying, thank you, Pastor, you have shared something that has touched my life. I sincerely appreciate you, and thank you so much. Go to our View Sasa platform and share and like, and the Lord will bless you. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord cause his uh, countenance to shine upon you, give you peace and victory throughout this month, the month of restoration, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Bye.